Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> My name is Dr. Donald Death. Oh. Oh. The Scottish Death. And this fine young fellow is my associate and an accompanying piper, Pipe Major Bones. <laughs> Tonight, I will read to you from my little black book, Case Histories, if you will, projects that I have been directly responsible for in my capacity as the Scottish Death. <laughs> the first story is entitled The Chip Shop Man. <laughs> That was the introduction music. <laughs> Here is the story. Picture, if you will. It was a Friday night, and the end of year Gap office party had ended. It was raining, and Glasgow's premium chippy, the Blue Lagoon, was crowded. <laughs> Kenny was a wee bit intoxicated, having drunk at least two bottles of wine at said office party. He ordered a deep fried hamburger, Mars bar, sausage supper, chips, and a can of iron brew, and left to become wet in the drizzled walk up home up the hill to his overpriced apartment behind Glasgow School of Art. I had been watching him all evening, but also earlier in the week when he had. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Rod Stewart. Okay. I've been watching him all evening, but also earlier in the week when he had purchased an overpriced Hugo Boss suit from Fraser's. He had bought the suit so that he would look good for the office party and to impress Carol, the office slag. <laughs> He'd fancied her since the day she walked in wearing a micro miniskirt with fishnets and high heels. At the office party, they had been seated so far apart that Kenny didn't have a chance to chat her up. I saw to that. Actually, I saw to it all. Carol, unknown to her or anyone else, actually worked for me. And it was I who chose her micro mini fishnets and high heels that were part of her everyday uniform that titillated and frustrated <laughs> losers like Kenny. <laughs> so, the evening had gone badly for Kenny, and to compensate for the disappointment, he had drunk as much red wine as he could. After leaving the Blue Lagoon, I followed him up the hill and watched as using a combination of chin and available fingers, he managed to open the deep-fried hamburger Mars bar sausage supper tray lid and began a clumsy scoff as the rain cooled the greasy meal and it began to firm up into a nice artery-clogging lard. Halfway up the hill, he decided he would like a swig of iron brew, so he tried to pull the ring opening on top of the can. This was proving a little more difficult than the opening of the deep-fried hamburger Mars bar sausage supper tray. His solution to this was to stand on one leg, raise his knee, <laughs> and try to balance the deep fried hamburger Mars bar sausage supper tray on his thigh. <laughs> he actually managed to do this with my help, of course. And freeing up his second hand, was able to pull the ring and open the can, which exploded and covered the front of his jacket of his new expensive Hugo Boss suit with a nice sticky caramel liquid. This now complemented the greasy stain on his trouser thigh left by the tray of the deep-fried hamburger Mars bar sausage supper, and now lay face down on the wet pavement. Oh. <laughs> With a deep, drunken sigh, he gave up. The rain got heavier, and as Kenny trudged up the hill and was crossing the street at the top, he was hit by a taxi and killed. <laughs> at this point, the taxi driver was no longer concerned 
with a drunken slag in the micro mini, fishnets and high heels, and I just puked up and passed out in the back seat of his car. Another stunning night in Glasgow. <laughs> <laughs> Piper Alamen from the early departed. <laughs> One for the Piper, and one for me. <laughs> Stand easy. <laughs> Race up! <laughs> 